Hey, that's really loud. What's what's uh, the most important item of clothing uh, you should have when you are caught in a situation unawares out in the cold? I would say for the average person who can't afford to buy downfilled and all the exotic clothing, that they should go after wool. And I would say four layers of wool on the upper part of the body and two layers on the lower part of the body and perhaps wind pants like what I have here in nylon because it tends to repel the snow and the snow doesn't cling uh, to the pants like it does to wool. And that will take you a long way. Uh, you can take off layers or you can put on layers. And with four good loose layers, you're going you're gonna to have uh, uh, a maximization. Uh, the other thing uh, uh, is covering the neck and the head. I, I've got a, a scarf here that I can wrap around. It's actually a survival scarf. I can use it for a number of other things. But when it gets colder, uh, I can wrap it twice around my neck. And I can pull my hat over my ears. 20% of my body is radiated from this, the, the head, ne head and neck. And it's equivalent to this, uh, this uh, wool shirt that I'm wearing, just those two things. That well, shelter, I would imagine, is, is very important, too. We touched upon that earlier, but I know uh, you can also make a shelter out of a, a parachute. That works very well. Yeah, if you're a cross-country skier and you don't want to maim our forest, uh, the less you carry, the more you'll have to know about the plants and being able to apply them in the various ways. Uh, if you know the properties, then you're going to maximize on everything. Yeah, it's a good idea to buy some ripstop nylon or go go to our surplus store and, and buy a parachute. Then you can make yourself a, a very compact bundle that you can use for shelter. You know, the shelter, what it does for you, it, it sort of uh, provides a dry, warm, comfortable place to spend the night or, or spend a few days waiting for help. One of the things that amazed me more is, was this twine or rope that you uh, wove right in front of my eyes. How, how did you do that? What was that made out of? Uh, that happens to be a grass uh, sedge. You can use just about anything that uh, you know has some flexibility. Uh, you, you've got about six or seven different materials in the province that'll twist into gra cord or grass. You know, you, can, you need to make a bowstring or you want to fire by the bow drill. Uh, you like to have a form of cordage. You know, you might also sacrifice some part of your clothing and twist the cord the same way, where you take two bundles and twist them both in the same direction and then cross them over in the opposite direction and, you res and the result is that cord there. What's the most important item to carry in your car? You can't, if, if you don't have one of these uh, tins and so forth, uh, surviving in a car is a little different than doing in the bush. Uh, I think your car is a great survival item. But to uh, the most perfect situation I would know would be to carry a Coleman lantern. The Coleman lantern will provide all the heat that you'll want. You'll probably have to open a window considerably to, to uh, let in more oxygen and, and to vent off some of the heat. But the, la the lantern will allow you light when you need it. Maybe there's something wrong with the motor or maybe you've got to change a tire or when you hit the ditch, when that lantern going, all the windows will be lit up, or something happens on the road and you're scared a snowplow is going to hit you, there's going to be a better chance that they'll see you this way if you're, maybe your battery dies and so on. But I would say that one single item would be a Coleman lantern with uh, the gas packed in the container in such a way that, you know, when you have an accident, you don't have that explosion that uh, saps all the oxygen instantly out of the center of uh, the uh, interior of the car. And if you're lucky, when you get into the woods, you might even have a saw with you. I see you use that. Oh, yes, uh, uh, the saw. Now, the saw uh, choice is very important. Uh, what really uh, bothers me is to see saws that are quite small and there's no space. I would say that the saw should be at least from your nose to your fingertip long, and uh, this one is even a little narrow, and it should be at least the span of the hand. Otherwise, you're going to exhaust yourself. It's not going to do you very much good for the collapsible type of saw that's so small. You try to ch uh, saw through a log that... Uh, is going to give you lots of heat and you won't have to add any more wood to the fire for four hours or so. Uh, the saw will cut that log in about a quarter of the time that an axe will chop through it with a minimum of effort and you can do it in the dark, whereas axe use is very dangerous in the dark. Yeah. You teach a course in winter survival at the University of Alberta. Are young people today concerned about survival or is there an apathy about it? I think it's uh, very popular. I understand we probably turn away uh, um, maybe three students for everyone that does get into the courses, the uh, wilderness living skills type courses. I think there are more and more people that are hiking, more and more people that are going into the outdoors, and there are more and more people that want to be more knowledgeable and take a, you know, a knowledgeable interest in what's going on around them in the forest. Suppose I get in a, in a situation, a survival situation, and I don't have anything to eat on me, and I uh, plan on spending uh, two, three, four days beneath your pine boughs here, what would I do? Well, I would say that uh, if you're uh, an average uh, of average weight, uh, I would say 65 
kilograms. Uh, Experiments have proven that you've got 40 days for sure. You'll be able to manage those 40 days eating nothing but drinking copious amounts of water. Uh, you want to keep dehydration to a minimum. You want to uh, uh, drink that water as hot as possible, so it's important to, to try to, to, to boil it so that the calories that would have been used to heat the water are, are not going to be wasted that way. Uh, you're apt to live 50 days if you drink really hot water and sit there and fast, and you're apt to be healthier when they find you than when you first started, because through the fasting process, there are a lot of beneficial things that are apt to happen. If you're fortunate enough, uh, there are some fasting situations that could be detrimental to your health. But Well, Morris, I've learned a lot about uh, how to survive in the wilderness on the barest of necessities, but summing it all up, what would you say is the most important thing to remember? I think it would be very good to remember something that will keep you from panicking, and that is Remembering that the bush is neutral and keep saying to yourself, uh, oh, the bush is neutral, it's, it's neither for or against me, no matter what I do. Uh, the bush is really not that interest. It's what I know and what I put into the situation that's going to help me out. So what happens with a lot of people, they get this feeling on the back of their neck and, they, and then they start doing things without thinking. They don't calm down and, and, and uh, settle down to doing important things that are going to play a, a significant role in their survival. And so they scurry off, throw away their clothing, throw away their equipment and, and panic and we find them dead very often. You know what else I remember? You promised me some lunch. What's for, uh, what's for lunch here? Give us a pot and put on some tea. Okay. I like tea.